prior to the new 2014 update of Adobe Muse, it was a pain in the neck to design a website that was optimized for computers that have retina displays. For those of you who aren't familiar with retina displays, there are a lot of Apple computers out in the world now that have four times the number of pixels in the display as a normal display. And while they're the same size and from a distance they may look the same, they are much more crisp and much, much more detailed. Uh, if you've got an iPhone, a newer model, or, or a newer model Android phone, you could probably look at your phone very, very close to your face and not be able to discern pixels from one another. Uh, that is because the pixels are tiny and there are a ton of them and they're very close together. So if you're designing a website and it's being viewed on a retina display and you haven't designed your graphics to be optimized for that retina display, your website is going to look, honestly, really terrible. For those of you who have a computer with a retina display, you know what I'm talking about. And for the most part, us retina display users are closing websites that are not optimized for retina display because we just believe that they're old, lame, out of date, don't care about us, what have you. So if you've got an audience that's using a Mac, uh, odds are uh, a portion of that audience are going to be using retina displays and your website should be optimized if you want to hold their attention and make them think that you are a cutting edge designer. So now with Adobe Muse CC, the 2014 version, we can go to File and choose Site Properties. And in the Content section, we have this resolution menu. Uh, normally it's set to standard, but if you click on standard, you can switch it to high DPI 2X. That is strange talk for retina display optimized. Uh, it has something to do with the fact that retina is coined by Apple and high DPI is the generic term. Uh, but the idea is that you are putting your website into this high resolution mode. Uh, it warns you when you click on this that images will significantly increase page load time and the amount of data that viewers must download. Uh, this kind of scared me out of it at first, but the truth is there is a little bit of JavaScript that's embedded in your website when you do this that will figure out whether or not your audience is using a retina display. Now, if they're not using a retina display, it doesn't load the higher resolution graphics, so your website's going to load exactly the same way that it always has. Now, if someone is on a device with a retina display, it's going to preload the low resolution versions while it works on loading the high resolution versions. So your website's not going to load super slow. If anything, if somebody is on a slow connection, you'll find it loads at regular resolution, standard low resolution, and then loads the high resolution on top of it. So it kind of starts out a little blurry and then it clears up. It's actually really cool. It's a, it's a smart way to do it. It's really the smartest way to do it. Uh, and this is based off that Retina JS. Uh, tutorial that I have on museresources.com uh, except now it's kind of built in to Adobe Muse but it's the same idea so when I choose use high DPI I've now gone into this mode and I'll hit OK and now anything that I drop onto my canvas will be interpreted as a deliberate attempt at dropping in a retina resolution graphic and what I mean by that is that your graphics, your resources that you're going to be dropping into your website should now be twice as wide and twice as tall. Otherwise, they're not retina optimized. Retina displays have four times the number of pixels because there are twice as many horizontally and twice as many vertically. So if you've got an image, like here I have this space background, uh, I'm going to look over here on my transform panel and you can see that the width is 300 and the height is 200. Now the width is 300 and the height is 200 in terms of the design and layout. This is still based on regular pixels in terms of measurement and in terms of my canvas, but my graphic is not 300 by 200. My graphic, if we go into the finder here, is double that in height and width. You can see these are all 600 by 400, so it's 300 doubled and it's 200 doubled. So all of the graphics that I'm going to drop in need to be twice as big in width and height, therefore four times as big, uh, and they need to be at least that size. I mean, they can be bigger as long as you scale it on your canvas to be smaller than half of its pixel dimensions, then it will become retina optimized. And if you guys don't really want to deal with the math, or if you're, if you're more uh, designers who do by doing and not do by math, uh, you can look over here on the assets panel and you can see where it says 2x, 2x, 2x next to all these graphics that are listed out. The reason for that is that their dimensions on my canvas are 50% or smaller 
of the raw dimensions of the original asset that I dropped in. Uh, if I were to make this a little bit bigger, see that 2x disappeared from this one. If I make it smaller again, once I get back down to 50%, the 2x comes back because it is now retina optimized. Uh, consider this 2x to be the yes for retina optimized. Any of these that say 2x, they are a yes to become retina optimized when you preview in the browser or when you export. I will warn you guys, on the canvas, and I asked the developers of Adobe Muse about this because I was confused. On the canvas, in the design view, when you're looking at your graphics on your retina display, you will find that they are not retina optimized. And while the interface of Adobe Muse is retina optimized, as of right now, the design canvas is not. The design canvas is not retina and it is not 64-bit. The canvas is still kind of the same as it was in the previous version of Muse. But when you go to preview in the browser, things really clear up. And I have redesigned the entire website Adobe uh, of Adobe Muse Resources at museresources.com. The entire website is rewritten to be uh, retina optimized. So for those of you who are on retina displays, go check it out and you'll, you'll be able to see the difference. Um, you can see especially here with these little icons that these now cleared up quite a bit. If I slide it over, it's going to be hard to tell on YouTube, uh, but you could probably tell with these thin line drawings that they are not as clear over here on the left on the canvas as they are here when I preview in the browser. So don't be put off by that. When you, when you preview in the browser, everything will be fine. Everything will be retina as long as you see the 2x over here. So just remember, design all of your assets, get all your photos, your graphics together at double their resolution horizontally and vertically and you'll never have a problem. You'll be able to drop everything in and uh, in fact even though, let me go back to the finder here, even though let's see which folder, graphics assets where was that space? Here we go. So here's that space image. Even though it is 600 by 400, because I've told Adobe Muse that this website is going to be a high DPI website, when I do drop it in Notice it is the same size as it was when it was scaled to 300 by 200. Um, the reason for that is Muse understands what I'm trying to do here. It understands that I need a resource that's 600 by 400 in order to drop it on my canvas at 300 by 200. If this website was not retina optimized, let me actually go in and choose site property and go back to standard in the site properties here. When I go back to standard resolution, Adobe Muse now understands that if I drop in a graphic that is 600 by 400, that I must want it to be 600 by 400. Uh, now, in this in this case, it doesn't quite understand because I've switched back and forth. But if I were to create a new website and never switch it to Retina optimized in the first place or high DPI in the first place, then that image would drop in as a 600 by 400 dimension image on the canvas. So that's what you get you get what you sign up for. So if you sign up for high DPI, the math is going to change for you when you're dropping in your assets, which is kind of a nice thing. Uh, if you watched my previous tutorial on the Photoshop generator, then you know for you Photoshop designers out there that you can work at every on everything in Photoshop at the retina resolution, at the width and height of the retina versions, and then spit them out of Photoshop, drop them into Muse, Muse understands how to size them, and then you're done, you're good to go. Another thing that I want to give you guys a heads up about is embedded assets. Uh, whenever an asset is embedded within your Muse project and not referenced from a folder on your computer, you get a different little icon here. You get a little icon that represents that it is an embedded image. If you guys aren't familiar with embedded images, um, for those of you who do have the Icon Megapack installed or who have downloaded really anything that involves a graphic, uh, that, that's in the form of a library widget that gets installed in a Muse. Uh, the Icon Megapack from museresources.com is an example of that. Uh, whenever I drop something in here, let me find an icon that's interesting, like under tools here. Uh, if I go and grab, let me grab settings A. Here we go. So if I go and grab settings A and I drag it on here onto the canvas, it goes in as an embedded asset and if we go and find it on the assets panel you can see it has a different little icon here this is normally where I would see the icon that says 2x to tell me that it is going to be retina resolution now the cool thing is as you drag it you can still see the little scale percentage going with your cursor and as long as it is under 50 percent it will go out as a retina optimized asset 
because these were intentionally oversized icons. If you guys download the Icon Mega Pack, they're intentionally gigantic, so that way as you scale them down, they can still be used as retina-optimized resources. So here at 25%, I'm good to go for a retina-optimized version, so I will go ahead and preview it in the browser. And when I preview it in the browser, it's preparing it for me. Here we go, and it is retina optimized. Again, it might be hard to tell on YouTube, uh, but if you were looking at my screen from my distance at my resolution, you'd be able to tell that this is in fact retina optimized. In fact, if I drag it up onto the bar up here and open it in a separate window, you can see it loads up at twice its size, and in the address bar, it ends with at 2x. Uh, in this case, underscore 2x, but what that means is at double the size for retina resolution. So I'm going to go back here. You can see that it displays at half the size, but with twice the pixels for retina displays. So that is the idea. Once you get your site enabled, it is as easy as that. It's a, it's mostly backstory, honestly. Most of this, I'm just giving you guys an idea of how it works. Uh, but as far as the mechanics of it go, design everything at twice the width and twice the height and drop it in and you got nothing to worry about as long as you've gone into the project or the, uh, the site properties rather, and you've told it that you want a high DPI product to get spit out of Muse. That's what will happen. So I hope you guys like this tutorial. It's a great new feature. If you guys want to learn more about some of the other new features, please subscribe if you haven't already. I've got more cool stuff coming.